guys, here is the third letter that we have just now. The parents are Aria and Remy, and we have nine puppies. Now, this letter is something else because we didn't get any girls. Not a single one. They're all boys. <laughs> like, the odds are tremendous that this would happen. It really is very rare when you get zero of the opposite gender. Like, to get them all the same gender is just craziness. So this letter, we have nine boys. And actually, for the first time in two years, we have available puppies. We have a list of people who are waiting for puppies, but timing is not right for them just now, and uh, or down to gender, maybe down to color. These guys are actually ready to go the first week of January, so they are going to be just after Christmas that they're going to be ready to go home. And we do have a few of them sold. So we have six puppies available from this letter. So if you're interested, please get in touch with us. Go on our website, oldshakespringers.com, and uh, fill out an application form, and we can go from there. We'd love to hear from you if you are interested in one of these boys. But yeah, it was just really, really rare. Like we, we very, we don't have often happen where there is only one gender in the entire litter. To have nine puppies and not one single female, to me is just absolutely mind blowing. And all the years I've been doing this, I've never had that happen, to have that many and not a single female or vice versa, all female and no male. Usually we do get a few females, maybe one or two, uh, maybe three or four, and then a lot of the males. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it is the opposite. We get a larger number of females but typically we get more males than females. But this, this is by far a first for us in all the years that we've been breeding. So it's interesting. So it was interesting for sure. Um, mind blowing for sure, I guess I should say, to have that many puppies and only boys. But they're absolutely gorgeous nonetheless. We have got a good variation in coloring um, in the markings. We have liver roan mostly, I think we got six liver roan, we got a liver tri roan, we got a liver white, and we got a liver tri. So there's a few variations up for grabs, but um, absolutely gorgeous puppies, and I'm sure these boys are going to keep me well entertained, that's for sure. <laughs> Typically the boys do. So all of them are liver because Aria and Remington are both liver. We didn't get any black from this letter. Um, I wasn't even expecting black because when you put two liver English Springers together, they usually produce all liver. If you put two blacks together, you will have the capability of having liver if there's liver in this genetics. But usually when you put two livers together, you near enough always get an entire litter of liver. Unless, of course, they have a recessive genetic like Pippa does, where she throws these red sables. So it doesn't matter what the base coat color is, she produces this red sable in amongst the liver or in the black. So that's kind of neat to have that thrown in there. But with Aria's situation, we just have liver and white, we have liver tri, we have the liver roan, and we have liver tri roan. So there's a few variations there, and uh, I'm sure they'll be gorgeous puppies nonetheless. So I opened up to you guys a little in a video that we posted just recently and that was Gemma's letter and we'd actually lost a puppy. If you haven't watched that video you won't know what I'm talking about but we had actually lost a puppy from that letter a little bit later and um, I talked about how devastating it is to lose a puppy and when you have a situation where when you have a situation where you lose a puppy, it can be very devastating and it's one of the hardest things about breeding. That and retiring your, your older dogs. Recently we've had to um, have to move on a couple of our, a few of our adults, our adult dogs for whatever reason. And I talked a little bit about that in Sophie's video that was just done. So um, it's never easy, it's never an easy situation. But I do have a story for you guys that is um, pretty remarkable. This little guy, 
He's pretty small. He's the smallest of the bunch. But he is an absolute treasure and a little miracle to me. Because when he was born, he actually passed away. And unfortunately, sometimes these girls don't kind of show any signs of whelping. And Arya was a little early. So I didn't have Arya in with me 100%. And I actually heard the dogs barking. They were just out in the other room. And one of the dogs was barking. And I didn't know why they were barking so much. So I went out and I checked. Everything was fine. Went out a few minutes later and discovered Arya had had two puppies. One of them was right up by her face. She was keeping it clean. She was, it was nuzzling into her. But this little guy was right down at the bottom and he was still in the sack and he still he was still in the sack, placenta still attached right down by her rear end and he was just laying there and I thought, oh no I made up Arya's bed for her, whelping bed put blankets down for her and uh, gave her a chance to lay down and so that I could be there to help her and assist her with the rest of the litter and this little guy was stone cold, he was gone and um, I almost just gave up and walked away. But then I thought, you know what, I gotta try. And I burst open his sack. She wasn't really interested at this point. I, I didn't even let her see because he was so cold. I just thought he was gone and part of me was like, oh, what's the point in even trying? The other part of me was like, no, I gotta try. So I burst open the sack, again he was so cold, there was no blood flow, he was not breathing and I rubbed him down and I just continued to rub him down over and over and over and I prayed a prayer because I do believe in God and I do believe in miracles and so I was rubbing him down and I just felt I gotta keep trying, I gotta keep trying and it was probably about 10, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes before this puppy eventually went and I thought, oh my goodness, did it just breathe? And I thought, no, I must have imagined it. So I continue rubbing, and then after a minute, <sighs> takes another breath. Like, like that, just sudden, no continuation after. And I thought, that was a breath. So I continue rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, and just as I'm watching this little nose, it starts to go pink. His feet were still white. But I thought, oh, I'm noticing pink in his nose, so I'll watch his feet. And I continue to rub him down, more, rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And every, every couple of minutes, he would take a breath. And the color started coming back in his nose and coming back in his feet. So I got him all warmed up. I got a, a hot water bottle, and I sat with him for about two hours, maybe two and a half hours. I kind of lost track of time, but it, it had to be at least two hours. I sat right next to Aria. She was giving birth to the rest of the litter. I was helping her when she needed help. There was a few times where she just laid there and she just wasn't interested in cleaning the puppies or tearing the sack open. And um, I just would tear open and put it up by her face. And then she kind of start to get interested. And so with this guy, I just kept draining him. I had an aspirator where I would suck all the fluid out of his nose and try to get all of his lungs clear. I'd just really rub him, try to get him to cry, but he couldn't breathe out of his nose at all and he couldn't and when he would breathe it was very muffled and you could hear all the fluids. And so I just kept working with him and working with him and working with him. Got him warm um, and got him breathing again and it took about two and a half hours before he was eventually crying and I felt comfortable putting him in with Arya and just letting him sit with her. So he is a little bit, he did have a, a little bit of a rough start. He is smaller than the rest of them and typically when we do have a smaller puppy, we will hold this one back and we won't reserve it straight away because we don't want to have to put a family through that situation, bonding with the puppy and then something happened to him. But so far, so good. He's doing fantastic. He's doing really well. He is a little bit smaller than the rest of the puppies, um, but he did have a rough start, so it's not entirely surprising that he's just a little bit behind that way. But um, he's doing so good otherwise, and uh, in a few weeks, probably around about seven weeks, uh, we will find him a home 
should he continue to live, which I pray that he does. I really hope that he does because he deserves a chance to live just like any of the others. So I thought that was a really cool little story. Um, I've never had that happen before. When a puppy dies at birth or is stillborn, um, you know, it, it doesn't happen very often that they're going to be, that they're just going to pass away after they're born. Um, there's usually a reason for it and you learn over time when to intervene, what to do, when to do it. And so, yeah, I, I'm glad that I took the time and didn't just walk away from him. I'm glad that I took the time to really rub him down and try and bring him back. And uh, the proof is in the pudding, he's still here. So for now, I, uh, I have hope that he will survive, but at the same time, I don't want to put any families through that. So we uh, just mark them down as sold for now and then later on, should everything go well, which I hope that it does, we will find him a home later. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the last letter that we have just now. I'm going to try and get another video before they go home in January, but if not, because of Christmas and everything, this might be the only video I get. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing them, and I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas and a great new year, and we'll see you in 2022 if we don't see you before then. So, thanks again for following our along in our journey, and I hope you guys are absolutely loving seeing all these puppy videos and finding out what's going on with them. So thanks a lot for following along on our journey and we'll see you in the next one.